Right now, the largest crane on the eastern seaboard is on the scene in Baltimore, preparing for the complicated and dangerous effort to salvage the collapsed Francis Scott Key Bridge. The Army Corps of Engineers is calling this cleanup one of the biggest challenges it has ever faced. Divers will need to go into the dark, murky waters with special underwater torches in order to cut the numerous pieces of mangled steel and concrete into sizes that the crane can actually handle. But before any of that can happen, the Coast Guard has to stabilize the ship and remove the hazardous materials. And we're now getting some idea of what all this will cost. The Biden administration has already approved the first chunk of cash, $60 million to go to Maryland. But the Department of Transportation says that is just a start. Some estimates that overall costs are already in the billions. Joining me now is NBC's Gary Grumbach in Baltimore. NBC's Ali Vitali is on Capitol Hill, where lawmakers are in the very early stages of response talks. Okay, what's the latest, Gary, on the ground in Baltimore? Hey there, Chris. Yeah, I just want to talk through some of the logistics involved here. They have to get cranes from around the East Coast because some of the biggest cranes that were here in the Baltimore area are not big enough to get the bridge off of this ship. So they had to bring them from the New York area down the East Coast and in through a back way to get to this port of Baltimore. They then have to bring the Army Corps of Engineers here to start doing some of the serious work that you were describing, some of the dangerous work that you were we're describing because they're going underwater in this frigid water and having to cut these into pieces and make sure every single bit of it is removed because they cannot leave any piece of the bridge there because when ships come by once it's reopened they don't want to risk other ships being impacted by pieces of the bridge. Our Tom Costello talked to the Army Corps of Engineers last night. Here's what they had to say about this process. The biggest challenge right now is what's right behind me. That piece of steel that you see draped across the front of the vessel, that weighs somewhere between three and 4,000 tons. We've got to get that piece of bridge off the front of the vessel. So we've got to determine how to best cut it, where to cut it, and how to safely lift it off. And then we've got to march our way across the 700-foot channel and do the same thing with all the steel members that are on the surface and those members that are 50 feet below us. Now, we just got an email from the governor's office. Governor Wes Moore is expected to provide an update at 2 p.m. today, 2 p.m. Eastern, with further updates as to the efforts that are going on here in Baltimore. Chris. So thank you for that, Gary. Ali, we already know we talked about that $60 million that came out yeah. of the emergency fund. Actually, the Transportation Secretary, <laughs> Pete Buttigieg, was on this show a couple of days ago talking about how that was going to be released as quickly as possible, and it was. Yeah. But that's just a drop in the bucket. What do we know about where lawmakers stand right now on funding this recovery and reconstruction effort? Well, you're right to point out, Chris, that it is very early in this process, and Congress isn't even in session right now. They are on recess this week, they're on recess next week, and so this is probably not going to be an issue that's taken up in a serious way in terms of being actionable, at least until the House and Senate get back in session in early April. Nevertheless, the conversation is already starting. You mentioned that $60 million in quick-release cash, basically, to help them clear the channel. That is only a small portion of what we're likely to see Congress Congress ultimately allocate to this effort, clearing that major port and then trying to get it back to functionality along with that bridge in as quick a time as possible. When you look at estimates, I know that people are going into the billions. I don't think that anyone is truly shocked when you see the size and scope of what's actually happening on the ground there in Baltimore. One of the ways that we can even just start to put an estimate on this process is folks are looking to compare this to a 2007 bridge collapse in Mississippi. Mississippi, that one was only a quarter of a mile long and ultimately cost $234 million to replace. The Baltimore Bridge, of course, is much longer, and the cleanup effort's already starting to drain down some of that money that's going to be used for the full-on removal and then replacement of everything that's been lost during this emergency and this crisis. Ali Vitali, thank you for that. Gary Grumbach, and as Gary said, and you see it on your screen, 2 o'clock, so about 40 minutes from now, the Maryland governor, Wes Moore, is expected to hold a press conference. We may learn much more about all of this. We'll have that for you, but thank you both. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on 
on your phone, you hit search on the bottom right corner, you type in MSNBC, you click on the MSNBC app, you click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.